Hello, I'm Christina, and I hate it. It's Christy. I know I was supposed to release the video yesterday, but I've been like super hella busy with school and everything. So, um, I'm actually kind of behind two weeks. So, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to release two videos today, and two of the, dr of the drama reviews that I was supposed to do. And I'm currently working on my bias um, list. I haven't had a chance to actually record it because I've been really, really, really busy. But I'm going to do a different countdown for you guys on Wednesday. But I will do the bias list as soon as I can. I look a little different because it, one of the videos was actually, was actually recorded two weeks ago. And one of the, and the other video was recorded yesterday. Um, so I just have to edit it, okay? Hey guys, it's Christy. Today I'm going to be doing a review to producers. I watched this drama because of Kim So Hyun. He is the guy who plays um, Samsung Gong in Dream High. This is the second drama of his that I've seen. I really, really enjoyed it. The only thing I didn't like was the ending, but I'll get to that. So let's get into the plot of the story. The whole point of the story is kind of to give you a glimpse of what it's like to be a producer on uh, the various types of variety shows. Sung Tan, he is trying to be a producer because a girl he likes as a producer on, on in one of the shows too. Um, So he's, he's going through the training to be a producer. Um, He has this difficult run-in with one of the producers uh, for the show Music Bank, Piri Yijin. She kind of hits his car and his car is a Beamer. It's an expensive car. She is trying to find out who the owner of the car is so that he can, she can pay, make arrangements to pay back. She's kind of feeling sick because the person isn't answering and, you know, she doesn't know who it is. Then Sung Chan sees Piri Junmo being very affectionate and cuddly with the girl that he likes. Junmo is the PD for the TV show to two nights in one day. No, two days in one night. Sorry, the way around. He's kind of having a hard time because he's heard that his, his show is going to get canceled because it's got very low um very low views. He's trying to come up with an idea to revamp it. Sung Tan kind of sees that, you know, things kind of go around in a pattern. You know, a few years ago, one type of variety show was very popular and a different time, a different type of, type of variety show was very popular. So now... It's coming to a time when romance, romance um, variety shows are going to be very popular. So what they're doing is they're trying to make it like a romance competition kind of thing. And they're trying to get only like the young, relevant stars. So they have a list of singers who are going to be in there. Uh, one of them is Cindy. She used to be part of a group, Pinky Four. She went off on her own. She left the group and she's a solo. And she kind of stepped on a lot of toes to get there. And the other girls in the group are kind of resentful about it. But she's really just following what her manager is telling her to do. They kind of put her on the show and they ask Sung Tan to be the producer who's going to be with her. They have history in the sense that one rainy day, he lends her his umbrella and he tells her to bring it back because it's part of the, it's property of the, the TV studio. And if it's not back and it shows that he logged it out, that he checked it out. Then he's gonna it's gonna get docked from his pay. So he's telling her to bring it back. And she's kind of taken aback. Um, he's the first person who ever really talked to her like a human being rather than the celebrity that she is. So she's not sure what to make of it. And she's kind of in kind of awe about it, you know, she's not sure what to make of it. She finds it rather intriguing and she kind of starts having a little crush on him. Every time she thinks that he's kind of crushing back on her, you know, she kind of like quiet about it. But that's not really the case. Sun Tan is actually in love with Yejin. He's oblivious to the fact that Cindy is in love with him. Yejin is oblivious to the fact that Suntan is in love with her. And Jinmo is oblivious to the fact that Yejin is in love with him. There's a lot of obliviousness going on in this drama. It's very funny and it's very quirky and there's a lot of little things that happen throughout the drama. There's too many things to mention in one review. It's better for you to watch it um, because everything that happens is very significant. Um, one of my favorite part in this drama is they're doing the show two days and one night. They're out in the woods. The rules, the, the rules are whoever doesn't get any person to stand behind them in the line before they take off is gonna have to trek through the woods by themselves with obviously one of their producer around. Cindy doesn't get anybody to stand behind her because there's already a plot among the other celebrities to leave her by herself. So she, you know, she goes off trekking by herself. And the thing is, is that even though it is um, a variety show, it, it is a uh, reality show, there are certain certain comforts that are t that are established 
for the benefit of the celebrity. The problem is, is that Sun Tan is very literal. So if they tell him the celebrity is not allowed to eat, can only drink water, and has to set up her own tent, that's what he's going to do. And that's what he was told. Nobody told him that the rules were around just for TV's sake. He is supposed to feed her. At the end of the day, you know, she makes it back to that she makes it back to where they're all supposed to meet and she hasn't eaten everybody's like what are you doing oh my god it starts raining but on on the trek over to their campsite it starts to rain she's kind of looking down i guess to avoid the rain hitting her in the face and he kind of puts his hand like this on her forehead like to stop the rain from hitting her it's so cute and it's i think it's one of the times when she kind of finds, finds herself pitter pattering over him but it's the instance when the audiences are kind of like, my God, that producer is hot. Like she should totally go out with him. So they kind of start writing him into the plot of the of the variety show and giving them more camera time. But he doesn't like her. It's it's a it's a good drama. I didn't know the intricacies that went into variety shows. I don't watch variety shows, but because I'm not the kind of person who take like jokes at another person's expense lightly. I don't I don't like that. It makes me feel uncomfortable. So I just don't watch them. But other people do and they've told me that they're great. They're just not my cup of tea. I would rather just stick with the dramas. I do I do want to watch the music ones. I just haven't had a chance to. I didn't understand the extent to what some of the producers have to go through to make sure that these shows get out on time. It's really interesting. I, I really, really enjoyed it. There are a lot of very famous cameos in this drama, mostly because the shows that are in this drama are actual shows. Like they're actual shows that are out on Korean television. So there's a lot of, you know, relevant stars that are there. There's a lot of stars that were relevant a couple of years ago. Um, Mr. JYP himself makes an appearance. Like it's really cool. It's it's very wonderful show. It's it's, it sounds like it's a, such a short review and it really it it's a short review because of all of the little nuances that happen in this drama there's too many to mention like there's a lot of instances where you know everybody is kind of talking together and there's a lot of you know plots going around and there's a lot of misunderstandings that happen and it's just it's a lot to take in it's a lot to kind of talk about it's not one of these dramas that follows a straight point like a straight storyline it just kind of varies here and there the only okay so let's get to the ending the only thing i didn't like about this drama is the ending there there are confessions of love cindy does tell does tell sinchan that she's in love with him sinchan does tell yejin that she that he's in love with her and Yejin does tell Junmo that she's in love with him. And he does tell her that he acknowledges her feelings and reciprocates. But the reason I don't like the ending is because I, w I was hoping and praying and just seriously hoping and praying that at some point, Sun Chan would turn to look at Cindy and be like, my God, I should be with you instead. She goes through this dramatic change from one episode almost to the next. She's got a lot of backstory and very deep personal issues with her manager the head of her entertainment company there's a reason that she is the way she is and it's kind of explained in the in the the drama my favorite part in this drama like besides the whole hand face thing after okay so cindy disappears for a little bit she disappears from her manager's radar because she's kind of sick and tired of all that crap so she ends up bunking with Yejin. They are at her apartment and Sun Chan is there and Junmo is there and you know everybody's just kind of talking about what they're going to be doing, what's going to happen, like what what's going to go on. And Cindy's kind of hurt. She's got her leg bandaged up or something. After you know a three-day vacay where she can just do whatever the hell she wants and nobody has like nobody's telling her anything, nobody's giving her a schedule, nobody's telling her to do anything, she goes back. Now in this time her management company has found another girl to kind of train and her name is Jeannie. Cindy's kind of taking a back seat to Jeannie now. To Jeannie now. Her manager is kind of expecting her to take this little girl under her wing even though she's supposed to replace Cindy. They have Cindy's last performance. She's not going to perform anymore. Her manager is there and she's like, you know, the PDs are here to make sure that everybody's comfortable. And, and she tells Yejin, like, you know, you're going to take care of Jeannie, aren't you? Yejin kind of looks at the manager and says, today, the only performance that I'm worried about is the main stage performance. And that's Cindy. So Cindy, I hope you do very well. You know, she's kind of throwing the manager, you know, under the bus and being like, you know, screw you and your new prodigy. Like today is Cindy's day. Kind of defend Cindy, you know, and it's just, I don't know, Cindy's like so grateful for it. Another fair, another one of my favorite parts is they're getting Cindy ready to do her performance and uh, Suntan is 
miking her up and you can tell like you can see the pitter patters of Cindy's heart like every time that he comes near her and every time he like he puts them the microphone and one of the one of the earpieces is in her ear and so he kind of puts his hand around her ear like cupping her face and putting his hand around her ear so he can get the earpiece in place and it's just like like you can see her taking a breath and be like oh my god Oh my god, it's such a great scene. I love it. It's like all of this sensual tension, you know. Oh, if he would have just kissed her, it would have been awesome. That's my thinking anyway. But that's the reason why I didn't like this ending. He not only does he not reciprocate her feelings, he kind of, even though she says so, remains oblivious to them. So it's just kind of like, dude, come on. <laughs> like, what does she have to do? Like, he should totally have just, you know, he should totally have ended up with her. That's how it should have ended. Everybody would have been happy. It would have been awesome, but no they didn't oh yeah so Kim Soo Hyun I saw him in Dream High and he had a cameo in Dream High too and I must say I really love this this actor he's so versatile his character is so funny he's kind of childish and he's kind of like loyal childish loyal like he plays little pranks on people and it's just it's so freaking funny um and I like the way that he he's his character is just kind of different in this one he was very naive in dream high and in this one he's more literal like he's he takes everything at face value and he really shouldn't but i like how his his um he's got this like whole playing field of different you know characters and emotions that he can that he can draw from it's so wonderful i really liked his his acting ayu i love her in dream high she, um, Kim Pil Sook is easily one of my favorite characters. I freaking loved her in this drama. She goes through such a, an amazing change from one, it's almost from one episode to the next. It takes a couple of episodes. She changes so much and she matures so much and she grows up so much. She goes through so much in this drama and it's wonderful to see her kind of adapt herself to it and kind of bring herself back to being a human being and then being a diva idol, you know? It was really great. I really, really enjoyed watching her. The other two characters, the other two actors I haven't, I hadn't seen before. Um, Kung Hyo Jin, I hadn't seen her in, in anything. Um, if I have seen her in anything since, I can't remember at the moment. But um, I hadn't seen her in anything before this. And I'm really, really excited to see her in something else. I really enjoyed her her acting too. She's very believable. Cha Tae Hyun, I haven't seen him in anything either. Not that I know of, not that I can recall. Maybe put some names down in the comments below me of something that he's in. Maybe I have seen it and I just don't know it. But at the moment, I can't recall having seen, seen him in anything, but I can't wait to see him in, in something else too. He's very unpredictable as a character. I, I couldn't, I didn't really catch a lot of the things that were going on with him, but it's a really, it's a really great drama. I just didn't like the ending. So that's it for today, guys. Uh, let me know down in the comments below if you, <laughs> my paper towels are going crazy. Uh, let me know down in the comments below if you agree with me, disagree with me. If you have a difference of opinion, let me know about it. I more than welcome difference of opinion. Maybe, you know, you see something that I didn't. If you have any recommendations for me or any requests, anything that you think you want to watch but would like to get another opinion first, let me know down in the comments below and I'll check it out for you and then I'll let you know what I think. If you want to see these dramas first and don't know where, um, I watch Hulu.com on my computer, Hulu Plus on my ex on my Xbox, on my TV, on my phone. <clears throat> I watch Drama Fever on my phone, on my Xbox, on my TV, not my Xbox. Drama.net is also really good. The only thing is for Drama.net is that each episode comes in about four parts and you have to click play after each part is over to kind of get the other um, part of the episode going. But it is free and it is good quality TV and there are no commercials. So you be the judge. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, if you haven't already and you would like to, you can subscribe. Um, you don't have to. I'm not telling you how to live your life. <clears throat> but I do try to do these reviews at least once a week. Sometimes I make it, sometimes I don't, but I do try. And uh, let me know down in the comments below what you think. All right, bye. So I forgot to mention, next I will be doing next I will be doing a review to When a Man Loves. After that, I'll be doing a review to Unhappy.